He followed me closely, staring the at me. The rather chilled and laid-back frog became a hate symbol hacked online by far-right groups. The internet is a place where people believe in expansive freedom of expression. This is not a fight over a cartoon frog. This is a fight about political speech. Is this cartoon frog a symbol of free speech or artwork hijacked by racist hate groups? Pepe, as he's known, has been labeled a Nazi, condemned by a presidential candidate, and now is at the center of an important legal battle over the First Amendment in this era of unlimited replication, imitation, and mutation. It's a fight that involves the alt-right, Trump voters, one of Washington, D.C.'s most powerful law firms, and the website 4chan, aka the asshole of the internet. Pepe the Frog is the creation of a 38-year-old cartoonist from Ohio named Matt Fury, who declined to be interviewed for this story. The anthropomorphic frog first appeared 12 years ago in Fury's webcomic, Boys Club. In the series' most famous sequence, Pepe is caught standing at a toilet with his pants around his ankles. As he later explains, feels good, man. It wasn't until a few years later when someone posted his image to the anonymous online image board 4chan that Pepe became a global phenomenon. The feels bad man Pepe emerged, followed by sad frog, and so on. Pepe was tweeted out by Katy Perry and Instagrammed by Nicki Minaj. And Matt Fury defended the anonymous people on the internet who had turned his creation into an unstoppable meme. But then Pepe became something else entirely. Pepe is a white nationalist symbol. It is one of the David things that Duke the racist Walmart right meme has Pepe adopted. the Frog has been uh, added to the so Anti-Defamation League's database of hate symbols. It's been a nightmare for Matt Fury. Intellectual property attorney Louis Tompro says Matt Fury contacted his firm Wilmer Hale after Pepe appeared in what he describes as an Islamophobic children's book in which Pepe does battle with a bearded alligator and what appear to be his burqa-clad minions. But that was just the beginning. Pepe's recent evolution into a right-wing symbol most likely started on 4chan's poll page a board devoted to facilitating politically incorrect conversation that became a haven for Donald Trump supporters in 2016. Images of Pepe wearing red MAGA hats proliferated, and Donald Trump Jr. even posted an image that included a Trumpified version of Pepe to social media. The Clinton campaign responded by branding Pepe a symbol associated with white supremacy. The emerging racist ideology known as the alt-right. Enter Mike Cernovich. Whether it's exposing Congressman John Conyers' sexual harassment scandal or publicly threatening to publish the shitty men in media list, Cernovich has a knack for leveraging his large social media presence to catapult himself into the news cycle. Most people in the fake news media who get to that high level are pedophiles. We're not alt-right and we're not old school, national review, take the high road, boring right. We're very aggressive. We've taken over, for example, the microphones at left-wing rallies. Bill Clinton is a rapist. He raped Juanita Broderick. The media covered it up. Bill Clinton is a rapist. I want everybody to know Bill Clinton. We're in a meme world. We're in a world where you have to be catchy, punchy. That's how you're actually influencing voters. That's how you actually are persuading people to accept your ideas as true. So we're a bunch of kind of merry meme makers. Cernovich posted a fan-made video on his YouTube channel that incorporates Hillary Clinton's audiobook description of what it felt like sharing the debate stage with Trump. There's an excerpt where she goes, and he was stalking me, breathing down my neck. I felt so creeped out, referring to Trump. And then you have Pepe kind of stalking Hillary Clinton. No matter where I walked, he followed me closely, staring at me, making faces. It was incredibly uncomfortable. And I thought, this is art. Fury's attorneys sent Cernovich a takedown notice. He complied, but also hired free speech lawyer Mark Randazza to draft a response. The way I try to explain fair use to people is that you can take a whole bunch of already created works, and when you take them all together and then you blow new life into that, a new thought is expressed through that, you probably have engaged in what's called fair use. You can't copy other people's ideas and claim free speech. That's not how the First Amendment works. It's not how copyright law works. They are absolutely free to, to, to spout hate in some other form. We just don't want them using Pepe the Frog to do it. 
on a human level, I have tremendous empathy for Fury. I think he made a tremendous mistake by not getting ahead of the Pepe usage. I think he, Matt Fury could be a, a worldwide name, a worldwide brand, and that he could have actually beat the people who are using Pepe in ways he didn't like by spreading more Pepe images. Fury's attorneys have gone a step further in the case of a Kansas City-based artist named Jessica Logston, who refused to take down the Pepe-themed paintings she sells on eBay for 99 cents plus $37 shipping. They filed a lawsuit against Logston, who declined to appear in this video, but responded via email that, while she may appear confident, she's rational enough to be scared because Wilmer Hale is a titan of law. She also attached a picture of a new painting she calls Wilbur Fail. We're not trying to do this because she's some kind of a small fish. Had she simply complied with the DMCA notice and our request, there's no question we would not have uh, brought a lawsuit. I had a brief conversation with her and she sent me as a gift, uh, I think you can, if you can see it over my shoulder, what is now one of my favorite works of art. If I were still teaching copyright law classes, I would bring this in as an example of classic fair use. I believe that things can be memed into the public domain. You know, the picture of the little kid with his fist like that, you know? It, I don't know who originally took that picture. Whoever did, if they were to try to lasso control of that picture at this point, I think they would fail miserably. But I think the result would be a thousand times more people reusing it. Because the internet is a place where people believe in expansive freedom of expression. And sometimes the greatest way to set a fire on the internet is to try to blow out one candle. Fury is demanding Logston seize her display and sale of any Pepe imagery and that the court award damages and unlawful profits. Four channers have responded by projecting images of Pepe on the Wilmer Hale office building. The case has yet to go to trial, but it could set a legal precedent better defining the blurry line between the free speech rights of internet meme makers and the copyright claims of artists. This is a fight about a big, multinational, multi-billion dollar corporation going after, not me because I'm a big name, but going after very small people who don't have the resources it takes. This is lawfare. This is not a David versus Goliath case. This is a situation where, if anything, the little guy here is Matt Fury, who's an artist trying to, to make sure that his, uh, his work is protected. Copyright is not just there to incentivize you to create, but it's also there to create a larger marketplace of ideas. It is not there so that you can say, I'm upset about how my work is being portrayed, about how my work's being talked about, and how about how my work is now being used in a transformative manner. And I'm gonna put a lockdown on that. You don't get to do that, Matt Fury. The frog is on the loose.